And one of the ways that the U.S. government is treating this combating violent extremism is through a lot of community outreach. Mm -hmm. How can that be problematic? So the, um, the community outreach is interesting. There's some ways in which um, meeting with community leaders um, is a useful thing to do, right? Um, we, um, I, I don't have an objection to that in principle. Um, but in practice, um, th there, are, there are some problems that have arisen, right? So one of them is, is um, where the, the distinction between community engagement and intelligence gathering gets blurred, right? And that we've seen that um, in a number of cases where, where community engagement exercises actually end up um, being, being pretext to gather intelligence on the, on the participants. Um, and that actually was also a major issue with the preventing violent extremism policy as well in Britain. Um, and, but then, you know, one of the things that I, that I um, identified when I, was, when I was researching the book was that a lot, of the, um, a lot of the community engagement that happens, say, for example, with um, FBI agents who are working on counterterrorism who do community engagement, um, what they're actually trying to do is not so much meet with community leaders so that they can have a productive conversation, exchange ideas, and maybe have some mechanism of, ac of accountability to the community. Right? That's not really what they're doing. What they're trying to do is recruit community leaders to be kind of advocates for the FBI to the community. Right? So you will find FBI agents talking about, um, I want community leaders to be advocating a counter-radicalization message to the community. Right? What does that counter-radicalization message look like in practice? Uh, it means you get community leaders who, um, out of this relationship with the, F with the FBI, start to say things like, um, don't talk about foreign policy. Right? They start talk t you know, telling uh, members of the community that to be American means that you don't raise these issues. Right? Ironically, um, the Constitution, the, the kind of definition, if any, of what it means to be American is, is precisely the opposite. Um, so, um, so if the relationship is set up in those terms, then I think there's there's a kind of problem in which um, the relationship becomes a kind of a kind of government PR exercise and a kind of um, uh, a way of again creating a kind of culture of self censorship in the community, right? Which is which is not only unconstitutional but also um, counterproductive again, right? We actually want the best way of tackling terrorism is for as lively as possible political conversations to be happening in the community, right? Um, you know, the United States should be the place in the world where the conversation ab about politics and religion is much livelier than everywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. Not quiet and silent and, you know, where, where people are feeling like they can express themselves. So, um, so I think that's, that's, um, that's one issue. And then, the, and then the, the, the last point I would make is, um, so the community engagement model that, or, the, or the community policing model comes out of, historically, it comes out of the kind of gangs issue, right? And so um, the, 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 the kind of way in which, where it's worked, the way in which it's worked has been where um, the, the community engagement exercise enables community leaders to raise civil rights issues and the law enforcement agency responds by changing its policies, that builds trust and out of that trust, um, better intelligence emerges from the community about gangs, right? That's, and it, actually that doesn't happen very often but that would be the ideal, right? Now if you transpose that to, to counter-terrorism, you have two problems. One is, um, in no case that I know about has any um, FBI field office that's doing community engagement um, heard um, criticisms of its policies and then said, okay, we'll look at that and try and change that, right? And, and that's partly because those policies come from Washington where, um, you know, where the agenda is not one where, where Muslim community leaders are having any purchase. Um, but then the second aspect is, um, what would be the intelligence that would be the other side of this trade, right? It, there's an assumption that, that Muslim community leaders know about all these potential plots but are just holding them back in some way, right? Whereas, 
you know, I would, I would say that pretty much, um, well, I'd say every, every Muslim community leader has, has not actually got any information about plots that would suddenly emerge as this kind of intelligence, right, that would, that would supposedly be part of a trade-off. So, so there's not even a, a kind of basis on which, you know, which is different from, from the kind of issue like gangs where you might well know a, a bit of useful information from your neighbourhood. Right, so um, because because terrorism is so rare, the, the, the same kind of logic doesn't work in this in this case.